We begin with this Fox News alert reaction coming in as President Obama raises the stakes in the Gulf oil spill. Just a short while ago, the president vowing that his administration will prosecute if any laws were broken. If the laws on our books are insufficient to prevent such a spill, the laws must change. If oversight was inadequate to enforce these laws, oversight has to be reformed. If our laws were broken, leading to this death and destruction, my solemn pledge is that we will bring those responsible to justice on behalf of the victims of this catastrophe and the people of the Gulf region. So what does BP have to say about that? Moments ago, I asked BP's chief operating officer, Doug Suttles, that very question. Watch this. Doug, thank you so much for being here. Your reaction to President Obama's comments this morning? Well, I think they're perfectly understandable. I, I, uh, I can appreciate why he's saying that and why he thinks the, uh, the laws need to change and why if laws were broken, they need to be enforced. Were they? I think, as you know, uh, my, uh, I have no idea. I think, as you know, that my focus here has been all about the response. I'm not actually involved in the, um, in the investigations. I'm trying to get this thing stopped and actually get it uh, fought offshore and cleaned up when it does get to the beach. Wait a minute, but you're, you're the COO of the company and you're not sure whether laws were broken? Well, you know, I, as I said, I haven't seen the results of any of the investigations. I don't know that they're even complete. Uh, and since April the 20th, I've actually only worked on one thing, and that's this response. That's all I've, abs all I've done since that time. And I think we just have to wait and see what those investigations find, and we'll deal with those findings once, they, once they're out there. All right, so I just want to make sure I understand correctly. You are not ruling out the possibility that BP broke laws, behaved criminally in the lead-up to this disaster. You know, I'm not making any comment on that at all. I, all I, as I said, all I'm focused in on is this response, and I think that's what the people here want me to do. I'm working quite closely with the Coast Guard and the other agencies as we do that. We need to let the investigations run their course, and they'll find what they find, and we'll deal with that when they find it. So you don't have any problem, then, I take it, with the Attorney General Eric Holder coming down to the region and meeting with the state and local prosecutors. Uh, one uh, report, The reports are, perhaps, to look into a criminal investigation. You know, that doesn't surprise me that they're doing that. I think that's what the president's ordered him to do. That's what the people are actually doing. So it doesn't surprise me they're doing that. Uh, but once again, I, I can tell you that, you know, myself, colleagues in the Coast Guard, colleagues in the other government agencies that are helping us here, that isn't distracting us. We're staying very, very focused on the task we have. In fact, where I'm here at Port Fouchon, it's all about how do we get more people to the front line faster. And that's what Captain LaFerre and I were down here looking at today. Well, I understand that. And I, and I know that, uh, you know, the, the, the residents of this country really want that, fo that to be your focus, how to fix it, not how did it happen in the first place. Nonetheless, the latter remains a focus uh, of our, our investigation into this. I mean, if, if this was a criminal act, if there was criminal negligence that led to the destruction of these marshlands and, uh, you know, the 11 men lost their lives and on and on the damage goes, obviously BP needs to be held accountable. You would agree with that? You know, this is a very tragic event, whether it's about 11 lives that were lost or whether it's the impact to the region. And, of course, what we have an opportunity to do is try to minimize that. And if there are legal issues associated with it, they, as I said, they'll find their course. I think what we can do right now, what matters the most, is how do I minimize the impact on this region? And that's what I'm working on every day, and that's what I'm working on with people like the Coast Guard every day. Mr. Suttles, before I let you go, I want to ask you, who, who in your organization at this point can speak to whether or not a crime may have occurred here. Well, I think you, you can talk to others, our, our CEO or, or Bob Dudley, who's spoken many times, but I think what they'll tell you is the same thing I'll tell you, which is let's let the investigations happen. Let's, let's see what they find. The government has investigations. We have our own. Many people have them. Let's let them run, run their course. Let's let the facts come out. And then we'll, we'll determine what needs to happen after that. In the meantime, and that could take some time, in the meantime, what we need to do is figure out how to get this thing stopped, how to contain the flow, and how to minimize the impact to this region. Understood. Thank you, sir. We appreciate you sparing the time today. You bet. Thank you. All the best. Well, that was rather extraordinary. It is not every day you hear the chief operating officer of a company refuse to rule out criminal behavior by his own company. Uh, what did you think? Let me know. Kelly at foxnews.com. We're taking your emails now. And by the way, folks, the Obama administration says that it has been on top of this Gulf oil spill disaster since day one. And our Brain Room team, 
has been on the story as well. If you want to check out some more information, you can go to foxnews.com for a timeline of what the president and the administration have been doing since the rig explosion on April 20th, triggering the worst environmental disaster in U.S. history. You can click on the oil spill timeline link on our homepage, foxnews.com.